All right, so this is part two of the uh, robotic lawnmower. Uh, we'll walk around it here, and you can see changed the front end a little bit, uh, tipped the motors upright, and made it so they're on a pipe so that they're more adjustable now. Uh, those adjust, all I have to do is loosen the bolts back here, and the motor can be slid on the pole. It's actually down about as high, or down as low as it go, which would make the deck as high as possible right now. Uh, seems to work well. There's also adjustment back in the back. I could tip the whole motor mechanism forward or backwards. Uh, I made a mistake in my design here. We moved the power controllers to the front. Uh, as you can see, this was an old Craftsman mower at one time. Now it's uh, pieces of a Craftsman mower. Uh, the only thing stupid that I did is these are actually for the blades and the controllers, or the batteries over here, feed these controllers that run the motors. If I'd been thinking, I would have put them forward and the other way, but it was easy and I was halfway done. So the wiring for all the controllers has been done back here. It's, just, it's similar to my tractor, if you watch the videos for it. So it's just going into a double throw switch here that's just disconnecting and connecting the power. Everything else is wired to stay on. This is, I could not figure out how to use a relay, so I've actually got a switch that's flipped by a servo, and I just put that to channel number five on my radio link receiver there. All the other wiring is kind of tied up and out of the way, so the system is turned on right now. You can see that one motor is painted blue. That's because I'm testing epoxy encapsulation, and that'll be a topic for a separate video but we're going to see which motor lasts longer to find out if that's worthwhile. The other is a motor I had sitting aside. Uh, we've got the uh, bracketing back here set up better. I had a little trouble with the tech screws I used to hold it down snagging, so we put bolts in with smooth heads on the bottom. Uh, they're Allen head. And we increased the height back there for the uh, tail wheel. Uh, the changes that this made by widening the stance and shortening the mower front to back, it seems to make it much easier to control, especially on hills. So I've already got it turned on, so let's take it for a little drive. That whine is apparently from the controller itself. I'm not exactly sure why it does that, but once I get the first person view on it, I'm not going to be listening to it anyway. If I want to turn and come back, it's much easier to do now. I can actually turn on the one wheel. We'll just walk around. So much more maneuverable, much more stable than it was before. The mowing height is good. Uh, I'll pull it forward backwards so that we can see. I'm going to turn on the blades. You'll be able to see how the mechanism goes. Uh, it's stupidly simple. When I flip the switch, don't put your feet underneath the motor. When I flip the switch there, and when I flip the switch that way, it turns off. So now I'm just going to take it on out through the yard. We're going to find, uh, we're going to go up near the front of our property. There's a horrible hill there, and we're going to test it out there. This is where my yard gets horribly unbalanced, so this is a good torture test for it. I haven't actually tested it here since I've done the uh, redesign, but this pole is the steepest thing in my property. really need 
need to set up the first person view on here, I'll have a much easier time. But 